welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a class for items so that we can have one class handle a variety of items of which we can then customize the name, pickup amount, and visibility after interaction. This is the beginning of a new series that will be about creating a collection game. By the end, you'll have an inventory, items, and interactable areas for chopping trees, fishing, and mining stone. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So for this tutorial, I'm starting off with a character controller already done. If you're in need of a character controller, I'll provide a link to our tutorial for that in the description below. However, if you have your own, you don't need ours specifically. There is no code within that tutorial that will be needed for this one. Now to go ahead and begin, I'm going to create a new C++ class. It's going to be an actor, and I'm going to name it item. And once the class is created, you want to go ahead and go over to your header. And the first thing we're going to do in here is create two new functions. Our first function is going to return a boolean and we're going to call it get active. And we'll end up using this function inside our character controller when interacting with items to determine if that item is visible and seen or not. Our next function is going to be void and I'm going to call it touched. And this function will be used to disable our item in scene after we've interacted with it. From here, we can go ahead and create our properties. We're going to end up with four. So we're going to do uProperty. And our first one is going to be our name, and I want it to be edit anywhere. And I'm going to give it a category of item. And the reason I'm giving it a category of item is so that way inside our details panel, these properties will all be listed in the same section so that we can handle it all at once and not have to scroll looking for things. I'm also doing these as edit anywhere so that way I can have different types of items and change what the item is inside the details panel. So again, this is our name. So it's an F string and I'm just going to call it name. And then our next property is going to be the amount. And again, it's going to be edit anywhere with a category of item. And this is going to be int amount. And the reason I'm doing edit anywhere for name and amount is so that way I can have different types of items that provide me with different numbers of that item. So I can have fish be one and logs be 10. Our next property is going to be our mesh. This one is going to be visible anywhere. And it's going to be a category, again, of item. And I'm going to do class, use static mesh, component, and it's a pointer, and we're going to do item mesh. And the reason I have this as visible anywhere is so that way I can only change the mesh before play inside the details panel. And then our final property is going to be a boolean. And this is going to be for our visibility, so we're just going to call it is visible. And this is everything for the header, so we can go ahead and go over to our CPP. And the first thing we want to do inside here is create our defaults inside our constructor. I'm going to give a default for both name and amount. For name, I'm just going to give it test. And for amount, I'm going to give it one. And there's really two reasons why I'm giving a default to our name and our amount inside of our constructor, even though we'll be changing those inside the details panel. And the first reason is for if I forget to assign these inside the details panel, I won't have null values for these properties. The second reason is for if I'm debugging and it shows up name of test and amount of one, I know that I forgot to assign that item and I can then go to that item and make sure the correct values are assigned. From here, we wanna go ahead and give a default to is visible. And this is going to be true in my case. All of my items are going to be active in the game by default, so I want this to be true by default. If you want some of your items to be visible and some not, then you would want to make the is visible property inside of your header to be edit anywhere, so that way you can also edit that inside the details panel depending on what item you want visible and which ones you don't. The final thing we want to do inside our constructor is set up our mesh. So we're going to do item mesh, and we want to create a default sub object 
of type u static mesh component. And then for its text, we'll just give it item mesh. After we've created this mesh and assigned it to our pointer, then we want to go ahead and attach that mesh to the center of our item. And the root component is the center of your item, so we're going to do root component equals item mesh. And then we're actually going to go back over to the header real quick, and we're going to add an include. And this is going to be components slash static mesh component dot h. And now we can go back over to our CPP. And that's everything we're doing for our constructor. So we can go ahead and create our functions. Our first function was get active. So this returns a bool and it's a item get active. And inside this function, all we're going to be doing is returning is visible. So return is visible. And again, what this function is going to be used for is to determine if the item our player is interacting with is currently visible in the scene. So that way we can add it to our inventory. Now we can go ahead and do the final function, which was a void a item. And this one was called touched. This function is for handling the disabling of the item after it's interacted with. So the first thing we want to do is make sure our is visible is now false, as I no longer want it to be in the scene after I've picked it up. And then we're going to take this object and set actor hidden in game. And we're going to make it true. And this will make it to where the mesh is no longer visible to the player. And then again, we want to take this object, but this time we're going to set actor enable collision to false. And this will make it to where the collider of your item is no longer able to be interacted with after that item is picked up. And this is all of the code that we're going to be doing for this video. So we can go ahead and go back to the scene and we can compile. And now that our code is compiled, I'm going to go ahead and refresh this folder and drag an item into the scene. And as you can see, if it's selected in my world outliner, I can see it in the details panel. And I'm gonna go ahead and just select a static mesh for it. And we'll just make it a pillar. And then I'm going to name it pillar. And then we'll give it a mount of five. So as you can see, I'm able to adjust all these properties within the details panel of the editor. As a recap, we created a class for our items that allows them to be unique in type and amount collected. The next video will be starting on the inventory. The video after that will be adding to the inventory after interacting with these items. The videos following those will be the collection areas such as trees, ponds, and rocks so that we can fish, chop trees, and collect stone. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to to leave them in the comments or you can join our discord and ask them there. We post videos here every Wednesday and Saturday but we also stream games on Twitch Monday through Wednesday so if that interests you be sure to check that out. We've also developed a phone app on the Google Play Store called Blast Off and we've created a Unity asset pack of kids toys. If you would like to support us in any of those ways or if any of those things sound interesting to you all of the links will be in the description below so you can check them out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.